Hello Widget Watchers, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can create these intro screen in Flutter, showing this beautiful sliding animation, or whenever you tap onto this next button, then the next screen will appear and when you are on the last screen, then the next button will disappear, so let's start the video. So I have opened this default Flutter project, and now from here let's first clean the stuff, so remove these all unnecessary comment and remove these method. And also remove these comment and the app bar and the whole body of this my homepage. Now here we will add page view widget and this page view needs children, so these children are the pages which we will appear for the intro screen. So I have already added my image assets, in this image directory, inside assets folder. So you also add these if you want to show the local assets. Then come to pubspec file, and here define the path of your assets. And please make sure that this spacing thing for the assets is correct. Now add the path asset then images. Now tap on this pub gate option, now come to main.dart file, and here first add a center widget, then here add the child and for child, we will use image.asset, then inside it add the path of your image, so here in my case, it is asset slash images slash image one, now copy this widget and add it one more time, and here change the name of your image as image two for me. Now if you save the program, then image is not loaded. So just rerun the app, but still the images is not loaded. So stop the app and we have this error because, I have forget to add the extension of image, so that is why my images were not loading, so please you make sure to add the extension correctly. I have added the extension, now just save the code again, so let's wait until the app is getting installed and here my app is installed, so you can see the images align center as expected, and here we have the color difference of the scaffold and this image. So let's change the scaffold color and make it to white, so that the scaffold's color will merge with the image. No it is looking perfect, now we can slide the image, so this was the first part, which is done. Now copy this center widget and add it one more time, and change your image name to image 3 and 4. Now save the code and here all our images are loaded. Now this is perfect, now in real world when you are developing complex mobile app, you don't add your all introduction screen inside page view directly, as I have done. So come into the lib directly, and here create a folder as screens, and inside screens, create four screens as screen 1, screen 2, screen 3, and screen 4. So that was it, now come to the screen 1 and here create a stateful widget as screen 1 and then import the material package. And then from here, remove this placeholder and here add a column, and inside it add children, then here add your image, which is same as we have done in the main.dart file. Now below this image add the title for your introduction screen, like here you will tell what is this is app about and other details of your application. So here I'm just adding a random string like we need to work hard, and now let's also add the style for this text, so this is going to title text so here add the black color and it is title, so we need make it big, so here I have added font size as 25. Then make it a bit bold by using font weight, then save the code and come to the main file, and from here remove this image asset and here call your screen one thing, now just save the code and scroll till the first page. So here you can see this is looking a bit ugly, so let's fix this by first removing the center widget from here, then come to the screen 1 and here add the main axis alignment at center. Now save the code, and it is looking fine, and here also add the sized box, so that image and text will have some space between them. Ok now just copy this text widget, and add one more time here, to give the description of the application, but as of now just copy the string and paste it few more time, and this description, so we need to make this text bit smaller than the title. So here add the font size as 16, and also make the color a bit lighter than the title. So here I have added the opacity, and remove the const from here so that the error will go, now if you save the code, then the description is appeared, but it's not looking good because our description is covered whole width and it is meeting to the side of the screen. So for fixing this wrap here this text widget inside a container, and here give it some horizontal padding by using symmetric, and add the same sized box here but with less height, let's make it to 20. And then save the code, then it is, looking a bit good, now change your capacity thing to until it's not looking good. 
In my case with 0.6 it's looking good. Now let's reduce the string, then save the code and now, it's looking a bit good. Let's also align our text to the center so for doing that make use of text alignment property then here add, text align to center. Yeah it's looking perfect. Now let's copy this whole screen 1 code and add the same code to screen 2 and change the image name, and do the same thing with screen 3 and screen 4, and don't forget to rename the images. Now come to the main file and from here, remove all the center widget, and here call your screen 2, 3, and screen 4, and please also don't forget to change the class name from screen 1 to screen 2, and do the same for the screen 3 and screen 4. Now just import all of your screens and now if you save the code, then it is looking fine to me. Now we need to show the page indicator below here, so that user will know on which screen he is. So for doing that first come to the pubspec file, and here at the smooth page indicator, and then tap on this pub get option. Now come to the main file and here wrap this page view inside a stack widget, then after this page view, here add smooth page indicator widget and this widget, needs two parameter, first one is controller and the second one is count, so here add the number of your introduction pages, in my case it is 4, so I have added the count as 4. Then now let's create the controller for this, so here create a new variable of type page controller, and name it page controller, then here assign this page controller to this controller. Now come into the page view, and here also give the same controller to it. Then save the code and you can see we can see the indicator above here on the screen. So we don't want that, we want this indicator to be bottom center aligned. So for doing that wrap your this smooth page indicator inside a container, and here add the alignment. For example, give it the alignment as 0, 0 so this indicator will come at the center of the screen because 0, 0 is the center of the screen. If you want to go above, then, it is y axis and its value is going to be in minus, if you want to go below, then it is going to be positive. And this same thing will go for the x axis, so we want to go down, so here add 0.7, it is there but make it bit more lower, so for that add the alignment to 0.8, now it's looking perfect. Ok now we want to show the next button on the side of this page indicator, so wrap this page indicator inside a row widget. And here add the text widget that say skip. Now save the code and our text is appeared, but it's not perfectly aligned, so for fixing that add the main axis alignment to space evenly, then it is now aligned but still it is not looking good, so for aligning it perfect here, add an empty sized box and then save the code, and yeah, it is now perfectly aligned. Now wrap this text widget inside a gesture detector so that whenever user will tap onto this button, we will get notified. So I have added that, then here add the on pressed property of this detector. Now here we need to handle two situations, that when user is on last page, we don't need to show the next button. Button should be removed, and when user is on last page then this skip text should be changed to complete. So for that come here and here create a string variable as button text and assign the value to skip. Now come here and from here, remove this skip string and here add the button text parameter. Now come into this page view and here add on page changed method, which will have this index parameter, which will tell that which page is user seeing. So here we want that if index is equals to 3, which means user is on last page, in that case, the button text string should be complete or else button text string should be skip. Now after that add the set state, so that the UI will get notified whenever the value of this button will change. Now save the code and as you can see whenever we come onto the last page, the text is changing to complete, so this is working fine, but complete is not making sense. So change the complete to finish, yeah, now it's making sense. Now copy this gesture detector and add above here and, copy the above detector and add the same below, because this thing should be at the left side of the indicator and here add the next button. So that user have two option. Now here create one more integer variable as current page index and assign the value to zero, because whenever the app is getting started, the current page index is going to zero. Okay, then here come inside this on page change method, and here assign the current page index with the index value. Now here add a check that if current page index is equals to three, 
then show empty sized box, otherwise show the next button. Now let's check, if user go on the last screen, then slightly shift of this thing is coming, so for fixing that inside a sized works, add some width like 10, so yeah, now it's is working fine. Now we want that whenever user tap onto this next button, then the next page should come. So for that here make use of page controller then add the next page parameter, and this needs two property, one is duration that how much time it should take to go to the next page, and the animation type, so here add the duration as 500 milliseconds. Then, at the curve of it as ease in, you can use whatever you want. Then just save the code and as you can see when I'm tapping onto this next button, the page is switching automatically, and for this skip button here you need to write the material page navigator thing for going to the home page. So you can do it as yourself as per your requirement. So yeah, that was it for this video, if you have learned something new from this video, then please give us a thumbs up, and comment down below that what you want to learn next, and if you haven't subscribed to Widget Wisdom, then please do subscribe.